Hey everybody, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today I got to take care of some unfinished business. I'm going to do the second half of a recipe, so to speak. A while back, I guess about seven or eight recipes back, we did venison moose heart. And we fried it up with Ritz crackers and butter and all. Oh, it was just delicious. It was sent to me along with some other wild game from a guy out of Washington by the name of Steve Daigle. And I was really impressed on how big the moose heart was. And he cleaned it all up. And then I sliced it up into little strips so I could fry it. In fact, there's a picture of it right there on the screen. Doesn't it look just absolutely delicious? Well, I'm just ready to fry this recipe. And I'm talking to him on the phone, kind of saying thanks for sending it to me. And he said, you know, we fry venison heart too at all of our deer hunts but we also pickle it. I said, now you ruined me. So there's another picture right there where I took half of those strips of meat, cubed them into little pieces to make it into pickled venison heart. And these are the finished jars right here, but I'm gonna take you through the recipe because we already shot that part of it. And we're gonna kind of join the recipe in progress, so to speak. You'll notice that the meat is a little darker because I thawed it in the refrigerator and I put in some herbs and spices and it kind of took on that delicious flavor, turned a little bit darker. But let's look at the recipe and then we'll come back and try these things that we waited seven days to finally get to pop the lid on. Pickled venison heart. We'll be right back. Watch the recipe. I need to explain something. When we pickle fish or shrimp, we actually take raw fish and raw shrimp and we put it in a brine for five to seven days of salt and vinegar. And that actually kind of cooks it with the vinegar and the salt. This here, we're not going to do that. We're going to save about five to seven days of wait. So we're going to be able to get to that delicious venison earlier than if we were doing fish or shrimp. Because we're going to cook this, not to death. We're going to simmer it till it's just done. Then we're going to put it in our mixture. And he said, you know, I'm talking about Steve Daigle now. He said, you know, I use your recipe about half the time. It's really good. I said, well, that sounds good to me. So we're going to put this meat that I threw a little bit of this herbs and spices on as it thawed out in the refrigerator. And I don't got much left because I used the rest of it on that other recipe. And we're going to pour just enough water in here to cover this meat good. And if this turns out like I think it's gonna, next year when I go hunting or any of my other buddies go hunting, I'm going to say, give me the heart so I can process it. Now in this little cup, I've got a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of onion powder. I love to season stuff up. Let me turn this on and get her going. I'm going to bring this to a boil, then turn it down to a simmer. We'll see you then. Well, it just came to a boil, and it smells fantastic. That moose heart in there with a few of those mixed herbs that I just bought at the store that kind of got everything in there. A little bit of salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Now I'm going to turn this down to medium and I'm just going to let this simmer no longer than about three minutes because that's what uh, Steve out there in Washington said. Three to five minutes and that's all you need to cook it through because it's pretty small little pieces. I cut it up pretty small. I just want to get it cooked through. You know, and venison is kind of like beef. It's okay to eat it rare. In fact, it's better rare. So we're just going to simmer this for about three minutes, and we'll be back with you. All right, this has been simmering a full three minutes. In fact, almost to a boil. I need to turn this thing off. So it's done enough for me. We just want to get that cooked. Then we're going to pull this meat out of here. Put it over here in our little bowl. Wish I had something else to pour this into. Hold on one second. I got it. Hold on one second here. Let me just get this and do it this way. There we go. All right, now we don't have much, and I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking, what am I going to do? Is that going to make one quart with quite a bit of meat, or could I stretch it to two quarts with just a little bit of meat and a whole bunch of onions? And I think I might do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch pots here. I hope this is big enough because I'm going to put in four cups of vinegar. 
Perfect. And three cups of sugar. Now, I, when I do fish and shrimp, I know a lot of guys back the sugar down. I like it sweet. But for this, because it's the meat, I'm going to go four cups of vinegar, three cups of sugar, and then a little bit of pickling spice. Ooh, this is a new container. I ain't even molting this baby up yet. Now, I get a lot of people ask me, pickling spice, how do I make it? Don't worry about it. Just buy it in the store in these little cans because it's got all kinds of herbs and spices in there, and, it, and the blend is just perfect. So just buy pickling spice, throw about, oh, a tablespoon in there is plenty good. Now we're going to bring this back to a boil. And we're also, because I don't have any shotgun reds, touch of sweet wine, and you can really use white zin. But I just had some white wine here. I'm just going to put in just a splash, and then I'm going to simmer this for about five minutes to get rid of the alcohol. And then we're going to put this and this and these onions in these jars. And then we're going to go into the painful part of this, and that's wait for seven torturous days before we finally get our hands on some pickled moose heart. See you in a little bit when this is boiling. Well, all right, we turned this off. We're starting to cool it down. All our sugars dissolved, then pickling spices, vinegar. It smells so fantastic with a little touch of wine in there. I'd use white zin, pick up one of them little pink bottles and dump about a third of it in there to make two quarts. We're going to do something different here today because Steve Daigle says, I enjoy your recipe with the shrimp and with the fish, but you chill the brine before you put it in there. Actually, when you put the venison in there and onions, put it in, not real hot, but while this is still warm. So that's a change for me. So we're going to try that. Now, one thing I did do, even though we don't have very much venison left because I fried most of it up, is we're going to try to make this stretch to two quarts because I'm going to use a lot of onions and just a little bit of venison. And man, you can see that I, I split it equally to put it in there. So we'll put a little bit in there. We'll call the bottom one the right and the top one the left. Put a few chunks in there and a bunch more onions. I'm trying to make this stretch, Steve, because I don't have a lot of venison. <coughs> in case you know somebody that runs into some extra venison this fall, you have my address because you sent me all kinds of good stuff. Am I still doing the right? Right? Left? I think so. Not a lot of meat left in there. But I've been waiting to do this recipe. Alright, we'll pack the rest of this up with onions. Because this is all the moose heart we have left. And if this turns out as delicious as I think it's going to, man, oh man, I'm going to pickle a lot of venison heart this fall. All right, we got those packed in there. Now all we got to do is let this cool down so we can kind of handle it while it's still warm, and we'll be back to pour it in these jars. See you then. All right, well, we got our brine over here. It's still hot. Yep. Oh, tastes so fantastic. It's cooled down enough so we can pour it in there, but it is still hot. I'm going to fill this up to the top. We're going to be pickling this moose heart and these onions. Man, oh man. Cheat that close to the top right there. And if you got any of this brine left over when you're ever making something, you can always put this in a little pint jar with a few eggs and pickle them. You snug that up pretty good. Now this is going to be refrigerator stuff only. It'll last in the refrigerator for probably a couple of months, but of course it won't. See if I can get that ring to jump down there. There we go. Snug these up, and what I like to do is I like to turn them upside down in the fridge. That way the very top when you unscrew it, the top is not, not pickled. And by the time you do turn it over in seven days, like this, by the time you eat to the bottom, the bottom part's pickled too. So. That's how you want to store it in the refrigerator, and look at there. Oh, man, I can't believe it. we got to wait seven days. Well, Steve Daigle, I waited seven days, just like you said. We didn't open these jars, 
but this morning I couldn't stand it before we even set the cameras up once we hit that seven days I opened this jar and nibbled some of the stuff out of here it's so delicious come on over here take a look I'm telling you I was already nibbling this morning I could not stand myself these onions are great in here and this venison heart pickled has just the right chew to it in other words it's not too chewy and it's not too soft it's just perfect for snacking and it was all I could do to keep me eating half of a jar here so I'd have some left for the recipe to show of course I got another jar over here and then that's all the venison heart I got mister Daigle I'm kinda running thin in the skin here I'm gonna have to wait till this fall and see if there's somebody that might have a little extra venison heart I say venison heart because this is moose heart and it's in the venison family. Now if you look up in or online and find out, in fact, hold on a second, I'll do something for you. What kind of animals are venison? According to Broken Arrow Ranch, venison comes from animals such as our native white-tailed deer, reindeer, moose, elk, and several non-native animals such as red deer, axis deer, fallow deer, sika deer, blackbuck antelope, and nilgai antelope. So basically a lot of deer and moose and elk are all in the venison family. So when you hear someone say, well I got some venison and some moose, they're actually saying the same thing twice because they're all in the venison family. And this is the venison part that I like. You know, you take one of these little teeny onions, lay it on a Ritz cracker, I'll take this little piece of venison heart that I have left. Mm. Mm. It's so good all by itself, but the three of these, this may take a minute. Mm. Mr. Dago, you ruined me. Now I'm going to pickle a lot of heart this fall. Wow. This, my friends, is delicious. You know, I really made this recipe for the 10 million deer hunters that go hunting every year that refuse to waste any part of their deer. And I'm proud of that. They take the heart out, they grind it into hamburger, they'll even grind it up, make sausage, fry it up like our other recipes, and in this case, even pickle it. So I love doing these kind of unique recipes. They're a little off the beaten path. We hope you don't stop watching our show just because we do one or two that are not in your wheelhouse, so to speak, because I love doing unique stuff. When I go see chicken gizzards at the grocery store, packages of them, and I know they sell about 100 packages a week, and there's 38,000 grocery stores, I know 2 million people every week buy those chicken gizzards and hearts and use them in recipes, and all those deer hunters use all that venison, backstrap, heart, you know, all that ground meat to make meatloaf and everything, and they especially give a lot of their venison to hunters feeding the hungry. Venison from their hunts and dollars from their wallets, you never read about it in the paper, but I try to mention it as often as I can because every year they feed over 25 million meals. That's right, because one deer given to a food bank and let them grind it up and make meatloaf and stews and chilies feeds 200 people. 25 million meals every year are fed to the hungry people right here in the United States by American sportsmen, and I'm very proud of that. I know it's supposed to be the end of the recipe, but i got to get one more onion and one more piece of venison heart. <laughs> See you in a second. Sorry about that. I had to have one more Ritz cracker with a little bit of onion, a little bit of venison heart on there. It was so delicious. I'm kind of doing lunch a little bit early here, but it's so, so good. We hope you enjoy this recipe, and we really hope you subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face is going to pop up over here in a little bit. When it does, click on it. When you see the word subscribe, next to subscribe will be a bell, and if that's kind of a notification thing. If you click on that and click all the little boxes and stuff, you'll be notified every time we come out with another recipe. We'll put some recipes up over here that we hope you enjoy if you click on that box at the end of the video, but is this the most delicious pickled venison heart recipe you ever ate sent in by Steve Daigle from Washington if it ain't it ought to be you gotta give this a try we try to do recipes for everybody no matter what your tastes are and we hope you enjoy them and yeah, we'll get back to some regular stuff maybe we'll go to McDonald's and get a toy or something make everybody happy but I love this stuff today Sheila did you have a good time? I did. Great job on the camera we'll see you next time right here on cooking with shotgun red or pickling with shotgun red
Mm. Just the right texture. Mm. Love it. See you later.